Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by today. Today I was gonna to make a video about how to shop for a boudoir photographer. And this is something, weirdly, you don't see too much online on YouTube. And then I started thinking about it. And if I were to make a video about this subject, it probably could have be two and a half hours long. So I decided to chop it down into smaller pieces. And today I'm gonna to talk about why experience matters when shopping for a boudoir photographer. You know, boudoir photography has grown enormously in popularity over the past decade, but not all photographers are created equal. And I think one simple way to think about this is kind of in terms of, would you say that all restaurants are the same? This is certainly not the case. And if you've ever seen Kitchen Nightmares, I'll just leave it at that. And I wanted to talk a minute about experience. Uh, boudoir photography is one of those trendy things where it grows in popularity. You have a lot of people suddenly coming in at points wanting to be photographers and they wake up one day and run out and want to get a camera, put up a website and the next thing that they are calling themselves a pro. Now everybody has to get started somewhere and no problem with that, but boudoir photography is one of these strange things where people one day are one thing and the next thing they're calling themselves a pro and wanting to go out and take people's money and trying to book people for photo sessions with basically little to no experience in being a photographer. One example I remember, this is probably more than 10 years ago now, uh, was there was this Facebook screenshot of a Facebook post that was going around with a woman who I guess had an at-home cupcake baking business she was failing at that and decided to pivot to become a boudoir photographer. And the post was a screenshot of her yelling essentially at all her friends and followers for not wanting to support her and give her their money as a new boudoir photographer and coming in and, and giving her business. And the joke was, well, why would you be screaming at people and treating them poorly if you wanted to give you business? But that's a little bit beside the point and that is very strange in how in this universe one day you're a cupcake baker the next day you're telling people you're a pro boudoir photographer and expecting to come in and have this great experience when that's certainly not going to be the case let me illustrate with a different type of an example imagine you woke up one morning and suddenly decided you want to become a professional guitar player and you get up race down to the store uh, go into your local guitar store and tell the people you want to get the same model that Eddie Van Halen used because you're going to become a professional guitar player. And that you come home, suddenly put up a website and declare yourself a pro guitar player. Would you expect to get a lot of business that way? Do you think bands are going to be coming to you and giving you lots of money to, to join them now because you're saying you're a pro guitar player even though you have no experience and know nothing about playing the guitar? That would be a little bit strange, especially if you went out to your friends and told them now, hey Tina, now I'm a pro guitar player. They'd probably look at you a little bit odd knowing you know nothing about guitar. But this is exactly what happens every day in boudoir photography. Uh, people one day decide they're gonna change lives and go buy a guitar and get a website and suddenly they're advertising themselves as pro photographers. And where this comes into play is that people often don't realize that you know, the person that they're looking at has no experience and really doesn't know what they're doing um, and wind up getting themselves, you know, in a bit of trouble and getting results probably that they weren't exactly hoping to get. So how can you tell if a photographer is experienced or not? Well, there's a few things you may want to take a look at. One thing you may want to look at is the photographer's gallery and looking for consistency and quality for a wide range of photos. You know, you're going to see lots of photos in different situations with different women. And a bit of that also is learning what good technical photography is. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I can look at a photo and tell if a boudoir photographer know what, knows what they're doing or not in like a half a second. I realize that everybody can't do this and this is something that takes a little bit of practice, but you should be able to recognize when something is aesthetically pleasing and it makes a woman look beautiful and so forth. Um, that's what you want to look for across a range of photos in a gallery. Another thing that you may want to check out is the photographer's social media. There should be a lot of photos on there, again, going back. How far do they go back? You know, you can scroll and scroll and scroll. 
if the dates of the photos only go back a couple of months, uh, I may have some questions in, in talking to that photographer as far as, you know, when they got started and, and so forth. If you see a long list of photos, maybe going back years and years of different women again and consistently nice pictures, you know, it shows that they may have some experience in doing what they're doing. Another simple way to check if a photographer has experience is look and see if they have reviews. You know, Google reviews, a lot of people now leave Google reviews and go back and check dates and see how far their first reviews go back. And that would give me a good indication of whether this photographer is experienced or not as well. Another way to find out if a photographer is experienced is simply have a consultation with them. Uh, email or get them on the phone and talk to them about their business, talk to them about their history and their work and so forth. I mean, that's a super simple way and photographers will be happy to talk to you. So I really would recommend sending them an email or picking up a phone and calling them, asking them about how long they've been doing what they're doing. Uh, they'll be happy to talk to you about their history. I do want to talk about one thing that can be a little bit confusing when shopping with a boudoir photographer, and that is narratives. Boudoir photography is filled with narratives. And what I mean by that is that a lot of photographers sell their experience, such as changing lives, uh, you know, more so than they focus on the actual technical aspects of what they were doing. And one tip to somebody that could be newer in the world of photography is they put a lot more emphasis on this changing life aspect than they do on the quality of their work. Not to say that boudoir isn't fun or so forth, but when you find someone completely focusing on these narrative aspects of their experience with them, to me, again, that would be a little bit of a red flag and I would tend to dig deeper into their portfolio and start asking a lot of questions. You know, personally, I've run across women who have spent good money for bad results in boudoir photography, and it is not simple to do to go out and automatically find someone that's going to be a great photographer. It takes a little bit of work. I've been at bridal shows and I've had women come up to me and they were flipping through my sample albums and were like, oh, I wanted my session to look like this or I thought my pictures were going to look this way. And they went on to talk about, you know, experiences of how they referred to a friend of a friend of a friend who just started boudoir photography and they didn't have the best experience, you know, but for some reason they thought that they would from somebody who really didn't know what they were doing or, or was just starting out just because they called themselves a pro uh, photographer. So just to summarize here, shopping for a boudoir photographer isn't necessarily always as straightforward as you would imagine. And I always want women to have a great experience and a great time because boudoir is really a fun event to go in and do but it takes a little bit of work. And you can see that finding a photographer with experience can be challenging. And not everybody who advertises themselves as a boudoir photographer necessarily has experience or knows what they're doing. You have to learn a little bit about what good photography looks like, follow the steps we listed before, go through galleries, look through reviews, do a little bit of work to find out about the photographer's experience, give them a call, send them emails, um, about their history, who they work with, and, and you could tell by talking to someone a little bit whether they know what they're doing or not. So hopefully this was a little bit of help for you and you can go out and have a safe, fun experience with your boudoir photography session. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for stopping by.